Good morning, everyone. A friend of mine brought me a Craftsman 4500 tractor with a Briggs 21 horsepower overhead valve engine on it. And he said it was smoking, runs okay, but it seemed like it was smoking all the time. So he uh, checked the oil, and um, oil was just about full, wasn't over full. So he asked me to take a peek at it. So here we are. So the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, pull the plug out of it and do a um, visual inspection of the plug. So I got the plug out here. Take a quick peek at it. I can tell right away it's very oily. You can see there's oil in the grooves of the threads and oil all over the plug. Really should be kind of a tannish gray, very, very light color. So I know he's got excessive oil in the chamber there. So now I'm going to hook up my leak down tester and uh, see if I can determine if it's got a bad head gasket. It's a pretty common problem on this uh, engine style. The uh, gasket blows between the cylinder and the uh, pushrod valley. So uh, I'm going to hook up my compression tester here and uh, put the motor up on top dead center and see if I've got a, a leak inside that combustion chamber somewhere. So here we go. Uh, as I start to increase the pressure on the pressure side, on the left side, that's the pressure that I'm putting into the cylinder, and the pressure on the right is the pressure that the cylinder is holding. So as I go up to about 20 pounds here, I see the cylinder is only holding about 10. And as I go a little higher, it gets even worse. So um, I pull the dipstick out here. I can hear the air rushing into the oil um, crankcase area. So um, I know I've got a bad cylinder head gasket here. It's, it's a pretty common problem. So I'm going to start to take it apart. And... Um, We'll pull the uh, air cleaner off it. We'll pull the cover shroud off the top of the engine and um, take a look at it. So here I'm starting to take the shroud off the engine um, using a um, um, small impact uh, gun that I use quite frequently to uh, disassemble things. I, I don't really use it to put things back together because it's a little hard to control the torque. So um, we're going to take the cover off here and uh, take a look under the cover, see if there's anything uh, out of place under here. Don't forget when you take these covers off, over near the air filter on this style Briggs engine, there's a tiny little screw. And um, a lot of people forget that screw and end up cracking the cover, which is uh, pretty expensive. So don't forget that screw. Here's a picture of it. Just a little uh, quarter inch, quarter head screw. So. Don't forget that when you take it off. Now we can pull the cover right off. <clears throat> so I don't see any nest in there, which is good. Very common to see a, a squirrel nest or a mice nest up in uh, New England here. So I'm going to start to take these uh, covers off, the valve cover and the um, shroud bracket there. Notice the spark plug wire runs under that shroud bracket when you put it back together. Sometimes it's not obvious, and they used to run them a different way on the earlier styles. This is a 2007 model so that uh, top cover is a little different. <clears throat> so got the cover off, valve cover off here, pull it off. There's a lot of oil in there, looks good. There doesn't look to be any buildup. The gasket was holding okay, no problem there. So I'm um, going to continue to take things off here. I've got a uh, long reach Allen uh, extractor here that I'm going to throw on my uh, impact driver here and back off the exhaust nuts. <clears throat> Be very careful when you take those off. If you snap something off in that head, you'll end up putting a new head on. The head's about 130 bucks. So <clears throat> back out the two screws, and there's a gasket on that uh, wash on that uh, exhaust manifold as well there. A lot of times you can reuse that gasket if it's not bad. It's about a $4 gasket. <clears throat> so now I'm going to take the uh, intake off. If you notice that intake is plastic. Be very careful when you move that around. Just back out those, those bolts, the 3 8 bolts. Inside that uh, intake manifold, right, right where the bolts go through, there's actually some steel uh, inserts that keep you from crushing the plastic. 
Uh, also on the face of that intake manifold, there's a uh, rubber O-ring in there, and you want to make sure you don't lose that or have it fall out while you're working. And then uh, forget to put that in, you'll have an intake leak. So here I've got the impact driver. I'm taking uh, just taking an eighth of a turn out of all the head bolts just to evenly pull the head off so I don't warp it. I know it looks like uh, I'm going at it like a bear here with this thing, but I'm only turning about an eighth of a turn. I just break them free, and then once I, I get them about half a turn out, then I, I'll go and pull them all, all the way out with this driver. This thing saves me a ton of time, and um, I, I generally don't assemble things with it. I, I always use a torque wrench on this. When you go back to put the cylinder head on, you want to torque that uh, cylinder head to 225 inch pounds. It's about 18 foot pounds. So if you have a, um, a torque wrench, you uh, set it to uh, about 14, uh, tighten them once, and then set it to about 18 and tighten them again. So here I'm popping the cylinder head off. I'm going to pull the head off with the valves and, and uh, push rods all um, in the head. I don't when I take them out I don't I don't pull the rods out I keep the push rods in it and uh, I'm just freeing up the gasket here so we can maybe save it so you can take a peek at it the push rods one uh, rod is aluminum one is steel the aluminum rod is for the intake valve goes on the bottom the steel rod is for the exhaust which is a little stiffer spring that goes on the top don't mix them up here you can see the cylinder combustion chamber is full of oil. It's got a lot of oil in it. And right here, you can take a look at the area between the piston and the pushrod chamber, and that's exactly where they all blow, right there. This one doesn't appear that there's a giant leak in it, but it really doesn't take much. As uh, the cylinder pressure gets high, it, it pushes some of that combusted uh, gas-air mixture into the crankcase, and then it just starts to pump up that crankcase full of pressurized air and that's when you start to see a lot of smoking and um, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll get a pressure coming out of your dipstick as well so right here is where it leaks I was just trying to show you uh, area on the gasket um, where it leaks so I'm gonna pull this out off and then um, get it all cleaned up I'm gonna clean up my piston and uh, cylinder area I bring the piston up to top dead center, use some uh, carb cleaner to melt the uh, grime off of that piston and, and a soft um, stainless brush to clean it up. Make sure you have this piston at the top of the cylinder. You don't want to scratch the cylinder or get a bunch of debris that can get down in those rings and, and cause those rings to bind up. So I did the same with the cylinder head and um, make sure you blow out all your cylinder um, uh, bolts, all the, the uh, cylinder head bolts, blow all those threads out. I throw a little WD on all the bolts when I put them back in so they thread in nice and smoothly so you get the proper torque. I've checked the cylinder head for flat, cleaned it up pretty good, and um, both valves are working okay. So um, I put the cylinder head with both push rods in it back as one assembly. I've done this so many times, I can set it up, get it all installed so I don't have to break the rocker arms off. If it's your first time, you're probably going to have to take those rockers off and then reset the lash. Um, it's really important to make sure that you have uh, the proper valve lash or your compression release won't work. I can't tell you how many guys I see trying to repair the starting electric starter on their uh, tractor, uh, putting batteries, starters, relays, new cables in it only to uh, find out that the reason that starter won't turn the engine over is because the valve lash is too loose and the little bump on the compression uh, release isn't isn't working so as your crank is turned over toward top dead center the I think it's the exhaust valve on this um, pops open just a tiny bit as the pistons going up to compress the mixture that valve pops open a tiny tiny bit to relieve some of the pressure and then when the piston's about an inch from the uh, top dead center, that valve closes. So you get enough compression where it, uh, the spark plug will fire that compression, get your motor kicked over once, and then as the motor starts to spin up, the compression release is centrifugal, so it, it pulls out, and then you get full compression once the engine's spinning. 
but that that compression release if you um, spin the motor over by hand you can actually see that valve um, open up a tiny tiny bit as you're coming up on the compression stroke so that's really important so here I've torqued my uh, cylinder head in three or four passes to about 19 foot-pounds, 20 foot-pounds or so. I go a little bit heavy on it. And um, now I'm going to finish up and I'm going to recheck the leak down here to make sure it's okay. So I've got my leak down tester put back in. I'm going to raise the pressure on the left here. And uh, I've got this cylinder back at top dead center. As you see, as I increase the pressure, you know, I'm at 10 pounds on the, on the uh, cylinder side. I'm a pound or two below, which is normal. As I get up to about 20 pounds here, you'll see the gauge will kind of slowly creep up to 18 or 19 or so. And that's pretty good. I don't expect it to hold 100% of the pressure. So um, I know I don't have a leak now. So we're going to put it all back together and run it. Thanks for watching.